when we think about economics and every economist in the world is going, how in the world can we have an economy that is strong if we're not dependent, if we're not going, trying to go beyond peak oil, if you're trying to cut peak oil in half, how are we going to have an economy that's strong? You're trying to reduce coal consumption. You're trying to reduce, like, like in, in the past, economic growth has been, a, been very closely related to consumption. So how can we do that? And, um, what I'm saying is there's a reason that I want to bring in this guy, Perry Merling, and I want him to go tell me who all his smartest students he ever taught at Bernard College and who are his smartest students he taught at Columbia and who are the smartest people he knows in the world of economics. And they're going to be my most important advisors because I, I, I do recognize the, the difficulty that we're going to have shifting our um, perspective on economics from a consumption economy to a service-based economy. Why service? Because um, the person cleaning my house isn't burning fuel while they're cleaning my house. Because um, the person that, uh, I, don't, I don't know, there are a lot of different types of services, but services aren't, don't tend to have to do with consumption. But can we only, can, can, but like, I, I think this, economy is, is difficult for Americans to digest because it tends to be more socialist. Um, because we're, what we're trying to do is reduce the consumption of every individual, but then we're also trying to allow them to have economic freedom. And we're trying to have free markets at the same time. Um, and we're also trying to get them completely off oil. And so we want them to be in a micro city where we are desalinating water, but then we're also generating electricity, but then we're also getting electricity from the Hoover Dam, and um, we're trying to only, and we're trying to do transportation that's based on that, that steam that we're generating, and we're going to go get the steam turbine, which was invented by whoever invented it. I'm not even going to go look it up, um, but someone invented it. Some, some white guy invented it. Um, and so, um, liquid fueled rocket was invented by Goddard. Andrew Fleming invented penicillin. I should have known that one. I don't know any of these people. I'm not very good at studying the history of inventions, but um, what I am good at is uh, recognizing the statistical probability that um, it's going to be uh, someone of uh, European descent that's going to invent the next great invention. Um, because I can look at this list and I can go and I can put it in a chart and I can rank the significance of their invention and I can recognize that like how many significant inventions happen between 2010 and 2020 I don't know I don't I don't even think that this uh, that deep learning um, type algorithms and um, I, I think all these all the algorithms they're using uh, predate 2010 uh, so I, I don't know uh, I mean, I do realize that some people have invented uh, some new algorithms a little bit, but their algorithms are are not not significant. Um, they they might be used um, in in machine learning, but they're definitely not the most significant algorithms. Um, I mean, maybe uh, there was there were some inventions in compression in the last ten years um, that were significant um, in from a government perspective, but not for the general population. Um, so. Um, I think that a lot of people think I'm racist because uh, because I, I can in statistics when you make when you like the rule number one about statistics is leave your biases at the door and what are your biases your biases is, is the is this notion that white people didn't invent everything um, that like everyone has an equal opportunity to invent something significant regardless of race um, but what did the statistics say that like the statistics say that like the probability that someone other than a, a white person or a Japanese person is going to invent something is relatively low. But that doesn't mean that there haven't been significant um, or, or somewhat like uh, that, that. It doesn't mean that there aren't going to be in there are there are some incredibly smart Indians and incredibly smart Asians that are inventing stuff, um, specifically in the in the field of algorithms. Um, they're actually surprisingly <laughs> better at math than uh, like. Khan Academy, that guy, Khan, is pretty impressive. Um, gosh, I shouldn't have gone on, on that. All I'm saying is that we need to invent a new economy. And that's why I want Perry Merling. And that's why I want Perry Merling 
to find some of the smartest people in the world to help me. And I, I want people to get over the fact that I have uh, this preconceived notion that the problem – because it's, it's, it's based on math. Like my, my, my racism is based on math. But that doesn't mean, like I said, that um, a, a black person can't be a way better lawyer than a white person. It's just the probability of them developing the integra integrated circuit might not be as high or it might be non-existent at all. Like based on the, based on the math, like the, the probability that anybody other than a Japanese or a white person, or maybe even a Korean, but Korean, they tend to have, share the same, um, some of the same genetics as the Japanese. Um, but the Chinese seem to think they're inventing stuff. Um, oh gosh, I'm doing so bad at this. I don't know how to convince people to try out a new economy. Um, and I don't know how to convince people to change their perspe perspective on economics that is more, that is beyond consumption based, that is shifting towards a um, more planned economy. And I think that the idea of a planned economy scares the crap out of a lot of people. And I don't blame you because uh, you don't want to end up having a crap country like the former Soviet Union. That was too planned, but it wasn't planned based on technology. And I feel like a lot of people are going, dude, you want to destroy jobs and so, so that you can ship them to different locations, to different types of jobs. And, um, yeah, I do. Um, but I, I feel like we have to, or else we're not going to survive. And that's, that's the real issue is I don't like everyone. I heard, I heard Dr. Martin Luther King's daughter talk about how, God is love. God doesn't hate, and blah 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 blah. And um, I mean, it, like it's it's hard to explain how if you like this notion that God changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament when it's pretty clear that God does hate people. Specific, he even hates specific groups of people in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, he doesn't hate because. But then there's like there are a lot of things that once people believe them, they're going to believe them, but. Obviously, I don't believe in God, um, but I do believe in us, and um, I'm the type of person that doesn't hate you. <laughs> even when you do things, like, even if I, even if you commit treason, I'm not going to hate you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually have empathy for you, um, but that doesn't mean that, the, but am I God? I think the people behind the, um, behind the curtain, you know, the Wizard of Oz, I think those people are a lot closer to God than I am. I'm just, the, I'm like more, I'm, I'm more the messenger, so... Don't shoot the messenger. Um, I'm just friends with the people behind the curtain. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to break people's preconceived notions about capitalism and stuff like that. But I, what I do know is that if we're going to survive, we have to do something radical. And I, I don't know how to convince you guys to do it.